In this video, we will study about the beta oxidation of fatty acids. Beta oxidation is a catabolic pathway of fats in which free fatty acids are converted to acetyl CoA. Since this process involves oxygen in one form or another, it is known as oxidation. But why is this process called beta oxidation? Now, fats are stored in the human body in various forms, and one of the major storage forms are the triglycerides. Triglycerides compose of a single molecule of glycerol which is attached to three molecules of fatty acid. It is important to understand the structure of a fatty acid. Here are two images that depict the chemical structure of a fatty acid. It consists of a long chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms which is denoted as R. This side chain is attached to the functional group, the carboxyl group, which is COOH. Now we know that the R side chain consists of single chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Let's expand this chain a bit. The carbon atom that is directly attached to the functional group is known as the alpha carbon. And the carbon atom next to the alpha carbon is the beta carbon. In beta oxidation of fatty acids, the R chain is broken down between alpha and beta carbons and hence the name beta oxidation. Let's have an overview about the process of beta oxidation. The human body contains adipose tissue which consists of triglycerides. The triglycerides contain fatty acids and glycerol molecules. The fatty acids are distributed all over the human body and from there they enter into the blood. Through the blood they are distributed to virtually all the cells of the body that can metabolize fatty acids. The fatty acids then move inside the cytoplasm of the target cells. In the next phase, the fatty acids enter into the matrix of the mitochondria after crossing the inner and the outer mitochondrial membranes. In the final phase, the fatty acids are metabolized oxidatively inside the mitochondrial matrix. So the whole process of beta oxidation can be divided into three phases. A. Transport of fatty acids from the adipose tissue to the target cells. B. Entry of the fatty acids into the cytoplasm and then into the mitochondria of the cells. And C oxidative catabolism inside the mitochondrial matrix. So let's first talk about the transport of free fatty acids from adipose tissue to the target cells. Like we just discussed, the human body contains fats which have adipose cells in them. The fats are located in main areas like abdomen, thighs and arms. The adipose cells contain triglycerides which have glycerol in combination with three free fatty acids. The combination of glycerol with free fatty acids is important because glycerol has a large molecular mass which prevents the escape of free fatty acids from adipose cells. Here the enzyme lipase comes into play which breaks the bond between glycerol and free fatty acids. Once this bond is broken, the free fatty acids can enter into the bloodstream and virtually reach any cell of the body that is able to metabolize free fatty acids. Now there are two tissues in the body that cannot metabolize free fatty acids which are the RBCs and the nervous tissue. Both of these tissues have one thing in common that they lack mitochondria and mitochondria are essential for fatty acid metabolism. So here is a target cell that is able to metabolize free fatty acids with the help of mitochondria. The free fatty acid first enters into the cytoplasm of this cell through a special protein called fatty acid transporter. The free fatty acids have a net negative charge and they cannot cross the membranes of the cells as such and they require special transporters to cross the membranes. In the next step, the free fatty acid must enter into the matrix of the mitochondria after crossing its outer and inner mitochondrial membrane. The matrix of the mitochondria is important because it contains all the enzymes that are required for the beta oxidation of fatty acids as well as the enzymes for Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Now, before the free fatty acid can be transported into the mitochondrial matrix, it must be activated. So let's talk about the next part that is the activation and transport of free fatty acid inside the target cell mitochondria. So first talking about the fatty acid activation. A free fatty acid must be converted into its active form that is the acyl-CoA. Acyl-CoA is the only form that can be metabolized inside the mitochondrial matrix. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme acyl-CoA synthetase 
and in this reaction a molecule of ATP is converted into monophosphate and a molecule of pyrophosphate is released. Coenzyme A is also essential for this reaction. Now, this reaction takes place at many sites in the cell including the outer mitochondrial membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum and the peroxisomes. Now, fatty acid activation is very very essential because without the activation the fatty acids cannot be utilized as such in the mitochondria. Now once activated, the free fatty acids are then transported into the mitochondria. Let's understand this transport in a bit detail. So on one side we have the cytoplasm of the cell, we have the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane. The space between them is known as the intermembrane space and on one side we have the matrix of the mitochondria. The outer mitochondrial membrane contains these small pore-like structures called porins which make the outer mitochondrial membrane very permeable to many substances including acyl-CoA. So acyl-CoA can freely transport inside the intermembrane space after crossing the outer mitochondrial membrane. But after that, the inner mitochondrial membrane is not permeable so we require a special mechanism to transport the acyl-CoA through the inner mitochondrial membrane into the matrix. This mechanism is called the carnitine shuttle. Now the carnitine shuttle contains many enzymes and one of them is the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 located in the outer mitochondrial membrane. The main job of the enzyme carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 is that it attaches a molecule of carnitine to acyl-CoA. In this reaction, the coenzyme A of acyl-CoA is released back into the cytoplasm and a molecule of acyl-carnitine is generated inside the intermembrane space. In the next step, the enzyme carnitine acyl carnitine translocase, which is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane, transports this acyl carnitine into the matrix of the mitochondria. But like we just discussed, acyl-CoA is the only form of the fatty acid that can be metabolized inside the mitochondrial matrix, so it must be regenerated. This job is done by the enzyme carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2. This enzyme attaches coenzyme A again to the acyl molecule and regenerates the carnitine back. The carnitine that is regenerated back is transported again into the intermembrane space that can be utilized by the carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1. You can see in this illustration that the enzyme carnitine acyl carnitine translocase transports one molecule of carnitine into the intermembrane space and in exchange of that it transports one molecule of acyl carnitine into the matrix of the mitochondria. So this is how the free fatty acid is transported into the mitochondrial matrix. Up till now we have studied the transport of free fatty acids from adipose tissue to the target cells. We have also studied about the entry of free fatty acids into the cytoplasm and the mitochondria. In the next part of the video we will discuss in detail about the oxidative catabolism that happens inside the mitochondrial matrix. So for a complete understanding of the beta oxidation topic make sure to watch that video. If you found this video helpful, make sure to support Med Simplified by hitting the subscribe button below and also make sure to like this video. Thank you so much for watching this video.